Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is more like an overview on how to play Dragon Breath event because like there's there's like a lot of people who doesn't understand the concept of RPG, how it works, etc. Okay, so in this video, I will explain everything that you need to know about Dragon Breath event without the chess guide. Okay, because the chess guide will be in a different video, and yeah, okay, uh. Uh, I'll put a separate video for that. Okay. First things first, of course, the banner system. So PT is the same as every four SSR event, which is uh it has discounted. Okay, for the first forty pools, and then um all of them, all of, each of the guys share the same uh PT, but the PT system, your PT count will be from one instance to another. So your PT, everybody's PT resets at one hundred, and then. You have to wait for its own rerun, so its own Dragon Breath rerun, for the PT to carry over. Okay, that's how for SSR event always happens. Okay, next, um, uh, you have the Astuteness event, which is this one. Okay, Astuteness task is only available for those who have the f um the event SSR. Okay, so when you have the four SSR, okay, all you have to do is level six two seals. And then one of them, you have to level 10, okay? So your final output as the cheapest option would be 10, 6, 1, okay? You don't have to put like 6, 6, 10, okay? If you're unsure, just do, uh, I'll show you example. Okay, so for example, Kufong, okay? Back then, Kufong also had same thing. Every SSR, four SSR event have it, okay? So what you do is two level 6, okay? For me, for, in my case, it's skill 1 and skill 2, okay? Both of them raise it to level 6. Go back to the event page, claim your reward, and then level this one to level 10. Because there are some that encountered this type of bug. Okay, I don't know how. In my end, I don't I don't have that bug. But if you're paranoid, ASF, or you want to play safe, you do what I do. Okay? Just do level 6, and then after one, level 10. Okay? That's for that's if and only if you are pulling for Dragon Breath and you're able to get it. Okay, otherwise this uses for you. Okay. Next. This Dragon Breath Tavern, okay, this one is basically like a rerun and at the same time for you to get the uh, the special the special name card, okay. This one, you have to log in every day because every day there are daily tasks, okay. So do almost the same as how you do your dailies and then come back to this page and then claim your rewards. I think there are a little bit extra like the the lawsuit, the spend X tellings, etc, etc, okay. And then you also have the, like, the Dragon Breath points, okay. Uh, the four SSR event for this time, it, they don't have an event shop. It works in a different system, okay. So I'll explain, I'll explain that to you a little bit later, okay. For now, you're required to play through the Dragon Breath event, including the side quests and daily quests, okay. Because every quest that you finish will give you um, points, hero coins, okay. That one counts towards your rewards and towards this this tavern tavern rewards. Okay, if you are F two P, you can clear all of this um shop within the whole event as long as you're doing all of the tasks and everything. You can you can finish this the whole shop only at the basic because in the advance you would need to use S chips. Okay, you would need to buy it in the in the market. Okay, uh, in order for you to unlock this one, in order for you to unlock one. Uh, one SR, okay. It costs three thousand two hundred S chips, so it's just like the hard PT in the flip card event, okay. So if you're F two P, you already got all of the cards, just like me. Then you don't need to. Oh wait, never mind. I don't have win. Okay, then yeah. If you already have the SR that you want, then you don't have to spend the this bread basket, okay. Otherwise, then yeah, you have, you need to spend S chips, okay. You can just see it in mall time limited and then you can see this one these options the bread yeah this one okay so yeah next the main the main part last dragon bread so how does this work basically it's like an rpg game if you've never ever played an rpg game ever in your life then it's fine i'll explain this to you okay so first of all you have four characters technically five for rosa but rosa's only for the team ultimate so uh, it doesn't apply here, okay? So you have four look look you have look as the guardian uh, Artem as the mage uh, Vin as the priest or healer or pharmacist 
and Mars as a sharpshooter. Okay, so here are some terms that I'm gonna give it to you along like throughout throughout the whole explanation of this video and or other boss guide videos and or um, other community posts that you've seen in anywhere in social media okay so when you say tank it is basically takes all the damage for your team okay not necessarily 100 percent of the time that it will take the damage for you but um high chance okay very high chance okay uh, because Luke has the highest physical defense, okay, let him take all the damage, quite literally, okay? Your next tankiest character will be Vin, because Vin has the highest magic defense, okay? Now, uh, in this game, you just focus on Luke taking all the damage, okay? Vin is just secondary because he needs to keep the team alive. If Vin is dead, you have no one you have no one to go to for healing okay so vin is also important in the team okay for your sustainability okay next you will hear this quite often in almost every gacha game and every game ever call it dps okay dps stands for damage per second or it could also mean damage per screenshot okay uh i i think in this case it would be damage per screenshot because it's a turn base so artem and marius are your main damage dealers okay or your dps now, Artem is special because his basic damage is AOE or area of effect. Area of effect means it hits all enemies, okay? While Marius is a single target, okay? Now, the difference between Marius and Artem is Marius has higher crit rate among everybody. You can see here, 15%. Everyone else is like 5%, right? So, crit rate means the chance of you dealing higher damage. And crit damage means the x percent of how big the damage is so in terms of asian terminology crit crit rate is the chance of you getting hit by the slipper and crit damage is how hard you get hit by the slipper okay and of course attack is what's the regular damage you get hit by the slipper right or yeah <laughs> so uh some enemies have higher physical defense versus other enemies okay i will not go down into detail on which which enemies is which because one i don't understand i don't know which one and just ungo bunga it okay <laughs> so all you need to know is artem and marius are your main damage dealer while luke and vin are your main sustainabilities okay so when you're when you equip when you equip the the uh, equipment okay just just keep tapping the recommended gear because sooner or later everybody will have an equipment okay it's all fair share okay uh come to the accessories later on you will as the further you progress okay you will unlock accessories so keep in mind that if you see attack just give it to artem and marius okay as, but if you see magic attack, obviously you give it to Artem because he's a mage, okay? Well, Marius is a bow user, so he deals physical damage, okay? But for me, on defense and magical defense, you give everything to Luke, okay? Because he's gonna he's gonna take all the damage, all right? I hope that understand that 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 uh that's good good enough explanation. Okay, next the skills, okay? Uh, I think it's better if I demo you a battle, but let me explain first. Okay, so every character has four skills except Rosa. Every all of the guys have four skills. You have basic, you have basic skill one, skill two, and passive. Okay, when you say passive, it's a skill that you don't, uh, you don't need to activate. Okay, it's usually status up or its own special ability. Okay, so for example, on Luke. His passive is increased physical defense, Artem's increased magic attack, uh, Vin is magic defense, and Marius is physical attack. Okay, so these are passive stats increase. Okay, next you have your basic attack, your skill one and skill two. For skill one, I will call it active skill or skill one, while skill two sometimes I will call it charge attack. Okay, why charge attack? Because if you read the description, it basically increases the damage for the next round. But in exchange, you have to reduce defense or reduce speed. Sorry, reduce speed. So in a sense, it's like your charge attack in Genshin. When you use your bow, you charge attack. It takes some time, okay? So that's the downside. That's why you need as as much as possible. You need higher level for your charge attack to be much better. Especially if you're gonna deal with the final boss later on in the story, okay? Now, skill priority. Uh, 
skill priority this is up to you okay there are two ways on how you're going to do the skill priority a lot of the other guide makers especially in cn will recommend you to level up luke and vin first before art of before artem and marius but i'm the other way around i i prefer artem and marius first before luke and vin because the because artem deals a shit ton of damage but if I were you and you're not confident in your own skill because it's your first time playing RPG or you're not the type to, to be into RPG, then you go for look and win. Okay? Now for look side, I would suggest you increase his passive skill, the last one, and the second skill. I mean the, the first skill, sorry. The active one, the taunt. Okay? So that way, look will take all the damage, right? And then for Vin, you can increase his healing if you think that a lot of the times you're you're dying so hard. Then yes, you can increase uh, Vin's uh, Vin skill. Okay, you can also increase this one if you want so that he can increase more healing, right? So yeah, because uh, it's kind of hard for me to demo it because. It, it's a chance for me to get to encounter the enemies like it's RNG so yeah look and win first before Arthur and Marius but if you're the crazy crazy type of uh, damage damage uh, damage first and and sustainability later then I suggest you go for Artem okay because Artem's Artem's um, basic attack deals AOE and there are a lot of mini bosses that are in twos or trees then it'll be nice okay even though there's only one boss artem can also do a lot of damage you can also use marius for the dps as well okay so for artem i would suggest you increase his charge attack first and his passive skill that way he can deal more damage and then afterwards you focus on his basic attack okay for artem for marius i would suggest his uh skill his active skill skill one so that he can buff all the team members okay and then afterwards you can increase the passive skill for now i'm i'm focusing on artem because uh, yeah why not <laughs> okay so yeah something like that rosa skill is special because you have to charge it how to charge you have to keep attacking the, their opponents etc etc so it takes quite some time for Rosa's skill to activate but when she uses it then uh yeah she can stun the enemies so yeah all hell are queen Rosa so yes <laughs> uh it's kind of hard for me to find opponents so yeah that's mm, that's the things you can do along the way some of the chests you can get items so you can feed that to your uh to your guys but for now because for guide's sake i'm not using any items at all okay let's have an example oh my god we have five so what do we do first how will how how do we know the order or the order of which guy comes first that will come on the speed the speed stat later i'll show it again <laughs> because i'm in battle okay nice uh what you do first you activate look stone so that he can take all the damage right depending on the enemy's speed okay sometimes it's you first sometimes it's the enemy first depends on whose speed is higher okay we don't know the enemy speed so technically it's rng okay next i would buff mario's skill because he can buff everybody's stats in terms of attack okay look will definitely take a shit ton of damage in this game i am so sorry <laughs> uh next one for our time you can either use the death reduction for three turns or the charge attack okay uh since the enemy's enemy's level is higher than me i would focus on the dendro slime and then use the death reduction why because the dendro slimes can heal always focus on the healer first before the rest of the enemies okay next for vin i will go for the charge attack because the enemies can hit hard for example like this okay so example your look is this damage then uh, like below 50% then you can use Vin's charge attack so that he can heal higher than um, Than his normal healing rate. Okay, because that was that's the description. Okay, next I will do charge attack so that it can increase the damage But at the same time it's a risk because if the enemy does a charge attack as well And at the same time it has speed buff then yeah, there's a chance that the enemy can almost one-shot you. This happened to me multiple times throughout my playthrough. So yeah, 
Anyway, my style is skill first and then charge and then charge attack. That's what I normally do. Lord. Okay. So for me, I would do a charge attack. Charge attack on everybody. For Vin, he will heal. Yeah, look at that. 1000 plus heal. Do note that there are some opponents that also that can do uh yeah there are some enemies that can do charge attack as well especially the birds and the mobs so yeah be careful of that next i'll still do charge attack as well artem aoe bam 1000 plus damage <laughs> yeah something like that see i told you artem's op because he can attack all enemies okay something like that so yeah i hope this this helps on how to play the rpg if I were you, finish everything in the story, side story and dailies before heading over to my chess guide because there are some paths that are blocked, okay? For example, before you can go to this to this area, you need to break the rock, okay? Uh, I think there are some areas like here and uh, upstairs, like here. This, this, this part. I already broke the rock here. So yeah, you need to progress the main story in order for you to obtain the skill where look can break rocks. So yeah, there are some cases like that. Other cases is the, block, the path is blocked until you finish the main story. So yeah, that's why I suggest to clear almost all of your quests before opening all the chests. Okay, if I were you. Okay. Uh, also, you are required to finish both the dailies and side stories because one, they give a lot of EXP. Two, they give you hero coins, which is needed for you to gain the gain the invitation. Okay, this one. So you go to this guy, then you need to claim this. Okay, all you need to do is just collect eleven no eleven thousand five hundred. Then you're good to go. You don't need to complete all the way here unless you're a perfectionist. But yeah. Okay. In my Taiwan server account, I did not finish Dragon Breath event. Like I did not open all the chests, but so but I was able to reach all the way into the badge. So yeah, it's doable even without 100% everything, as long as you do all the quests. Because spoiler in the side story, each of the sides there are some side stories that will give you the this item. There are some side stories that will give you this tier gem. And according to the alchemist, you have to quote unquote merge the tier gem in order for you to unlock more memories. So this is crucial for you to uh, progress in the last part of the main story. That's why you need to finish all of the side stories. And then the dailies is for the EXP sake as well. Okay. Now, uh, how to earn the... Wait. Uh, how to earn this one? You just progress along, beat up all the monsters and everything. Yeah. Every time you beat an opponent, you will get some some skill points and some e some EXP for your team as well. So yeah, every time when you encounter an opponent, just beat them up. <laughs> you can leave it at auto, just beat them up, okay? <laughs> so yeah, it's super super easy. R literally zero zero brain needed, <laughs> zero brain cells needed. So yeah, that mostly covers on how to do the dragon breath. So yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!